keep going through there. I have um, summarised and added the feedback from people who tried out the database in the two sessions that we had. So thank you very much to everyone who engaged so thoroughly and seriously with the database. This is what we did. I could see that people were browsing um, the initiatives on the home page. They were trying out the search functions. Uh, gave me a lot of feedback on things that needed to be improved. And I'm pleased to say that many people did go to the web form and did add their own gender initiatives. I don't know. <laughs> now I have to find out how to access them. <laughs> So that was, that was just wonderful. Thank you very much. I've divided, I've categorised the feedback into three separate categories. The first one is about improving the presentation and navigability of the first page that you see, that is the entire database. I've tried to put these in um, a sensible order. I probably haven't succeeded, though, so let's, let's go through these. What you saw in those sessions was not meant to be the first page that you will go to on the IMU website. So clearly people saw that we need a landing page, which has some background information uh, about the project, perhaps, a link to the project, and also an explanation of the categories in the database. I really think we need the logos also for the organization. Already in the language. Um, Marie Francoise is suggesting that we need the logos of all of the unions and supporting organizations on that landing page. So do you mean links to the database or links to what? Links to the database, links to the publication things. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. once you'd be able to go to the home page of, the, yes. of this project. Yes, that will happen. So the suggestion is that from the project's home page, there should be a link from there to the database. Yes, that will happen. Someone will do that. I don't know who. Um, there also probably needs to be contact details of someone on that database landing page on the IMU website, uh, if people spot errors or want to tell us about things that need to be updated. So I think some of the suggestions that, that came in might be, will be things that we need to discuss um, at, uh, amongst the coordinating group. I've already pointed out that there is a summary field um, for every initiative in the database, there is a 200-word summary. It will be translated into French and English. That is not appearing in the database. It needs to be there, and it needs to be straight after the name of the initiative. Also, we know that the view that we see is not very pretty. It's not very easy to read. So we probably need to see fewer columns on that first view so that the display is neater and the column headings don't look so chopped up. Uh, the next one is a, a question for me. Um, I'm not convinced that there is sufficient difference between effectiveness and impact to warrant having two separate categories there, particularly when we found so little evidence. So maybe we need to collapse those fields together. Um, the information about the seven uh, dimensions of good practice, the gender objective lists, um, are given there in their full glory of the long titles. They are too long. We need to shorten those. I've already done that in a table. That needs to be made shorter. Also, even though I wouldn't say that I know I could repeat to you all of those objectives or the subcategories, um, people who use the database will not be familiar with them. And so in the columns that say, if this is category one, and subcategory 1.3, I don't remember what 1.3 is. So we need either to make that num those numbers that appear to be clickable to take you to another page that lists them all, or to do the mouse hover thing. So when you hover the mouse over, the little box pops up. I don't know how to explain that properly, so I hope that uh, our technical help can do that. 
Uh, other ideas in the spreadsheet, the first field is simply called name. Some people were confused about, do I put in my name when I'm adding a, a new uh, initiative? No, it should be the name of the initiative, so that needs to be changed. There was, suggestion, was a suggestion for perhaps adding a field to say, who is the owner or organiser of this initiative? If there is an organisation behind it, perhaps, that could be possibly added, and which means going back through all 67 initiatives and looking for that again. Right. Um, I've been thinking throughout this week, and it came up again in these sessions, although a little differently, for... Oh, actually, this should be in the next one. Sorry, this is about searching, um, but I'll talk about it now. There are some kind of headline strategies that are not easy to search for or to see in the database, and we didn't know what they were until the whole thing was finished. So could we perhaps create an additional field that allows these things to be searched for and also points or makes it obvious to people that here in this drop-down menu are some uh, strategies that are, are being used a lot. So it could be a workshop, a summer camp, mentoring, um, networking. I'm still not really clear about that, but perhaps that's something to think some more about. The next one, uh, even though we checked all the entries recently, we need to check them again before this goes live for dead links, hacked links, incorrect naming of initiatives, um, checking again the categorisation of gender objectives and so on. So that's more checking that needs to be done. Someone suggested adding in a, a map of the world that shows the geographical location of all the initiatives by country. However, if we're adding new initiatives, then there has to be some way that that is auto that it's automatically updated without a human being having to do that. Um, in the, the, the view pages, so when you go from the main page, click on view that takes you to information about each individual initiative. At the moment, all of the category headings are there, but if there is nothing entered there, then the word empty appears. Uh, that doesn't look very nice. So there's got to be a way of making that invisible, even though we can't change the information. So it's something about the way that it's displayed. So those were the suggestions around um, presentation and navigability. Then if we look about the search functionality, and I knew there were lots of problems there and uh, there are lots more suggestions that people had. Um, the list of countries is not in alphabetical order. I have no idea why it's like that, but it makes it impossible to search. They have to be in alphabetical order. At the moment, it's not possible to, to have a single search for more than one country. You can only search for one country at a time. So it would be nice to be able to have a more sophisticated search there. Another search category, you can search by discipline. But because everything has just been transferred from the spreadsheet to the database, including the column headings, it just says M, mathematics, S, science. So those need to be spelled out in full in the drop-down menu when you're searching. And again, it would be nice if it was possible to search for combinations of those things rather than one category at a time. Also, um, because the spreadsheet was constructed in a way that classified what was in the initiatives that are in the spreadsheet, the only disciplines that appear there are the ones that are in the database now. But if people want to add new entries that highlight different disciplines or want to be specific dis scientific disciplines, then I think it would be good to change that categorisation so that we actually put in different scientific disciplines now. So even though some of them will be empty in the database, if people want to add new disciplines, they will have something to select. Uh, there were some questions around, well, what, what, is, what does technology mean? And I told people that in, in Ireland, the country where I work now, when you talk about technology subjects in secondary school, that doesn't mean digital technology. It means woodwork and metalwork, which I would never have thought of as being technology. So there are other ways of thinking about digital technologies, such as informatics, computer science. So maybe we need an explanation there that technology covers all of those things because people were asking me questions.
about what is technology. Does it include computer science? Um, the target level category is very messy because we just imported text from the websites that we found. So there's you know, a very long list of target level categories that all overlap, well, many of them overlap with each other. That is not helpful. Well, it, it's ridiculous to try to search on that. So someone needs to go back and clean up and compress those categories uh, and come up with, with something that gives a small number of, of mutually exclusive categories that can be searched on. And of course that means that all the entries in the database then need to be gone through again, all 67 of them, and recoded. Uh, at the moment there is not a search function for the, the gender objective, the dimension of good practice, and I think there needs to be one there, but only for the, the top level categories, so there are seven of them. Seven is reasonable to search on and we need the shorter names for those. Uh, someone made a very good suggestion that if, um, if, you do, if you're searching the database for a combination of categories, say um, mathematics initiatives in a particular country and you find there are none in the database, then would it be possible to have a message coming up saying, would you like to submit an initiative? that has this combination of categories, which I thought was a very interesting way of inviting people to, um, to add things. So this is the last category, uh, the last section about um, feedback, and it's around uh, adding and verifying entries. The web form in which people can fill in for an initiative um, uses the asterisk, the star, to indicate which are mandatory fields, that's a fairly common thing to do, but there's no message on the form saying that if there's a star there, it's a mandatory field that you must fill in. At the moment, also, there is no way of checking whether a proposed new entry is already in the database. It's not possible easily to search the database for that, so somehow we need to work out a way to make sure that if someone's trying to enter something that might already be there, that we stop that from happening so that no one's wasting time. Um, another thing which, which someone found out, which I had also found out, uh, on, on the, the opening page, um, if you click on add data to the web form and then click on either results or submission, what you end up with is like a list version of the entire database that has a whole lot of administrative information that looks like it should not be visible <laughs> to users. It looks like it should only be visible to the administrator, who at the moment I think is me. So I need to let the, the technician know about that. Uh, and someone um, entered a whole lot, entered something, a new, a new initiative, clicked on submit, and what happens then is a message comes back confirming submission and inviting the user to click here to check the entries that they've submitted. But the link doesn't work because the URL is incorrect and the bit that's missing, taking you back to the IMU website, it's actually the CWM page and the, the CWM part is missing from that address. So that's, that's an error that needs to be fixed. Um, I think this is the, the last one. So the other thing, of course, after people, you know, you, you, people who've submitted a proposed new initiative, how long is it going to take for this submission to be checked, to be reviewed, for a decision to be made, and then that decision needs to be communicated back to the person who proposed it. That's really important to close that feedback loop. And if it's decided that it, it's not going to go on the database, we need to have some reasons to communicate to people about that. And then finally, someone made a good suggestion that, this is probably a navigability thing as well. After you submit a new initiative and you get that message saying, congratulations, you've submitted it, it would be nice to have a button that says back to the home page so you can get back to the database without having to do complicated navigating to get back there. So that's covered all the written feedback that people gave me and everything that I could write down from the conversations that... Um, that I was having with people. But if there's anything that I've missed, please email me 
or write something down during the conference so that we don't miss things um, because I really appreciate the time that you've taken to, to give feedback on the database. Are there any questions that people would like to ask? things that I didn't think when I was with you in the room. But uh, so for this one, for the new initiatives submitted, um, there is a field for adding an email address. And like, so, so maybe there should be two fields, one for adding an e email address for information about the initiative and another one for the, the submitter <laughs> to know that, you know, like what you yeah. submitted is, which may be different, different. email addresses. Indeed, yeah. And the other thing, so it, when, when I was deciding what to add, it was quite difficult to decide because like a lot of the initiatives that I know of do not have official web pages. So if there is a way to like rather like I add a document or a report in the case that the initiative is not longer live. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, that's, that's more complicated, but maybe, yeah. you know, yeah. could, could be worth doing it. Yeah. Would you be able to email, yes. email yes. that to me? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, as I told you over lunch, one thing I didn't know where it was was all related to sexual harassment and violence and how to handle that. It was under a career developing career development or something like that, which I, I don't know, I found a little bit by chance. Mm -hmm. And then all of what is policy, that it could be inside a huge document with a bunch of things and suddenly there is a bullet related to something that is meant to alleviate the uh, career progression or help women, something but is within some regulation or something. So how to, and you were thinking that maybe the initiatives could be divided in a certain way for that. Yeah. The, Marie Francis. Okay. The, the two things come to mind there. Firstly, um, perhaps in this one here, the field of type of initiative strategy, we could have in the drop down menu something around dealing with sexual harassment. It could be there so that you can search on it more easily. Um, the other question I know that came up in our conversation was should the database only have initiatives in it that are specific to STEM and science and, and mathematics or should there be more generic initiatives which are relevant? And I can't answer that question. That's something that we need to discuss, I think. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. so there was something at some point we thought that maybe our database could be part of the Saga database. And finally, there was a question also of scheduling that made it impossible. And But now I've, we've seen from Anatea's presentation that the Saga database does seem to be online now. So I think we should make some kind of link or because in a way it, 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 they, they are twinned and we, we use their terminology and so on. Yes. Yeah. So I think that should be made uh, more visible. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's a suggestion. Yeah. Should I send you email? Please. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't bring anything to write with. That would be great. Thanks. Any other comment? Okay, so thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. So I think we can ask Christian also if he can come and present uh, what happened during his session. Which one do you prefer, this one or this one? I didn't um, make a presentation, but I've still got some notes. Should I put them up on the Beamer as well?
Okay, so the first question that we had, because I called Helena in the break between our two sessions, was um, where we could use some more input from all of you and your specific fields, because we don't really know how you would define a research network in your field. For example, in computer science, there are these proceedings or conferences, and if you publish in the proceedings, then you can be considered part of the computer science community. But, for example, as Helena told me, this is not the case in math or astronomy, for example. So, if we want to take a look how well you are fit into your research community, then we would need to know how we would actually know what this research community is or how you define this research community in your field. And then we could take the graphs that we have already created and put it into this network and see how it, how it looks, how well you are connected within your own field. And then, as a next idea, we already, or that was actually the starting idea for the whole thing, is we, wanted, we were interested in the evolution of the authorship networks over time because the research question we got was, or the hypothesis that we got was that uh, women stop networking at a certain seniority level and they just keep their network at the constant size. And that, that was one of the questions we would like to answer. If this differs for men and women, so if men, for example, network all over their career or if they would stop as well, and how, how we can see a difference. Beca because we saw, or we can see that in, in the 70s, we only did it for the 70s, that men had larger collaboration networks than women uh, in the mean. So then there would be the next question, do men always have this larger collaboration network, or, or is this equalizing out, or even out, now that time has passed? Um, we could aim for the creation of graphs where we don't look at one specific author but a couple of authors so that we can say they form a research group and can take a look how well this research group uh, fits into their field. We had the idea of adding more measures. For example, if we can get the math general, gen yeah, gen yeah, I think you hopefully <laughs> know the word that I wanted to use. Um, if we can add these data, for example, we would be able, or we would, it would be possible for us to see the supervisor-supervised uh, relationship, and this would be especially interesting, for example, in cases where the high profile supervisor was accused of sexual harassment and then we could take a look at his network if, that, if this instance was only once or if like he did or had women in his network for the last 30 years and maybe we only know it now because now someone stood up and said something about it or if he, and if he was possibly misusing his position all time before. So this could be an interesting question. Um, we could also use the collaboration graphs to compute these distances between authors, like in math it's called the Erdős number, or in physics there's the Einstein number that tells you the relative difference between you and the other person. We could take a look at the journals and the collaboration networks. So for example, does the editorial board mostly accept papers by people they already know or, or are they unbiased and where everybody has got a fairly same chance to get an article published, not depending on the connection to the editorial board or to the, authors, uh, to the other authors of the journal? What we will definitely do is we will ask ZB Math to in, uh, improve their own data 
for example, by adding a self-identification possibility to your author profile where you can choose, okay, I see this is my author profile and I can choose that I want to be a female, a male or something else. Maybe we would see which uh, genders to choose. And also we want to ask them if they want to use the charts we created to put or to add to their website so you can see them. If you click on a journal, then you get the gender um, statistics right away. Um, another thing I just came up with in the break was maybe we could also add the citation data to the collaboration networks and then we can maybe see if there's like these clusters that seem to be highly connected but they only cite themselves. So they, they don't really work with, with outsiders but only keep to themselves and maybe we can see that there's these authors that are overachieving with like 100 publications a year if they seem to be citing themselves all the time to, to game the scientific system because the number of publications is still regarded as a uh, or it's still very important and then we could again look and compare if women do the same thing as men or if, if these are only men that, that are working like this. And um, another thing would be to look at the different fields and the collaboration networks because we've already heard that in math it's usually you only have papers written by one or two or three authors whereas in, I don't know, astronomy or physics you have these large collaborations and so maybe you can see from the collaboration graph which field it is because it's more dense or it's, there's more nodes and edges in it. Um, then we could also add the affiliation or nationality information to these collaboration networks and then we could see if this is different for different parts of the world for example or even if we have good data we can even go to the institution level and take a look how it looks there or we can go a step higher to the country level and take a look which countries seem to be collaborating a lot and which countries don't collaborate at all. Um, and as the last point, uh, we've created our, all our code in a way that we don't have to focus on the STEM fields because with these DOI identifiers that are used nowadays, we can actually get the data for everything that's published with uh, a unique DOI and so we could actually do the evaluation for the whole scientific output. And I think this could be of interest because gender equality is still in the UN um, in the goals list, the SDGs, but there's no way to measure the gender gap in the scientific community or the, the gender equality in the scientific community at all. And maybe this would be a good starting point. Okay, yeah, that's it for the most part. Are there any questions? Thank you. So do you have any questions or comment for this uh, session? Uh, I, I am confused about this DOI, the DOI uh, thing because I thought it was linked to a single paper. So how how you extract a general, uh, I mean, how do you extract it for your purposes? Yeah, um, because there's, the, there's a large database called Crossref where every DOI and this metadata is stored and we can just ask the database if we have a DOI, then we can just ask for all the data from this DOI and if we know, for example, a journal, we can get all the DOIs in this journal and then we can get all the articles from this journal or the, the article metadata for this journal, for example. 
or if we have a proceedings book, then the book has a DOI and the articles itself have, a, have their single DOIs and we can just look at or get them once at a time. Any other uh, question or comment? Uh, on your very last sentence, uh, you say there's no way to measure it for the scientific community. I mean, that's the objective of this project, is to measure it. So but are, are you referring explicitly to publications here? Yes, no, I mean, for yeah, but we, we are just doing it for STEM. I mean, we could do it for all the sciences at once. Okay, so thank you. I think we are ahead of time, so that's perfect. So maybe Pierre can come and uh, show what happened with the session on, on Wikipedia. know I could do a presentation so I don't have one but I have written a report and I think I believe that will do just fine so may, if it's a bit it, it may be a bit too formal but I, th I think that's okay so the hands on the hands-on session of Wikipedia pages for women in science started this morning at 9 45 and lasted for about three hours with the coffee break in between, and it was under the direction of Camelia Boban. The goal of this session was to complete the mostly empty English pages of 13 pre-selected women scientists. More generally, the session aimed to familiarize the participants, mostly women, to Wikipedia content creating and editing. For the most part, the 20 to 30 participants had never partaken to such activities, some unfamiliar with computers themselves. So the first goal was therefore to set up everyone to their monitors, have them create their own Wikipedia accounts, as well as acti activate some useful tools, the so-called Sandbox Plus, uh, that end up being very helpful for the upcoming tasks. The second goal was to divide amongst ourselves who will work on what pages, which we did. Some of us expressed their wish to do slightly different tasks, such as writing the page of someone else or translating or modifying an already existing page, which they did. Finally, some of us became de facto helper for everyone else, thus effectively working on several pages at the same time. At the end of the session, we did not manage to finish the pages for all the 13 pre-selected scientists, although all of these pages have been started. They will be finished and possibly integrated properly to Wikipedia, after further cooperation between their original contributors, I mean the writers of this morning, and uh, Camilla Boba. In that regard, I ask all the people that, was the, that were there this morning to give me their username if they haven't already, so that Camilla can further um, correct and curate their um, sandbox page and possibly integrate them uh, uh, to, to, Wiki, to Wikipedia. So come to me maybe after this session and give me your username if you haven't already. Thank you. Thank Is you. Is there any question of something that I might have missed? Yes. 
Yeah, I think it's great to, to hear this report, but maybe we, you should have say or integrated uh, these 13 women, uh, how they, they were sel pre-selected before. I mean, I, personally, I know the answer is because uh, Sylvina had uh, asked to IUPAP people to suggest names. But I had the impression from uh, the initial reaction of Camellia that some of these names would maybe not be really convenient for creating a page because maybe they don't, uh, they are not enough famous, or I, I don't know. So was this discussed? I mean, was it part of the discussion? Or? So it was not part of, let's say, the main discussion. I believe some people discussed about it. I was not part of uh, this, uh, this uh, group of people, so I don't know. But maybe you were? Sorry if I cannot. Yeah, I was, the, that. I was discussing that with, uh, what's her name? Camelia. yeah. Uh, I wanted to add somebody else, somebody new, a Brazilian physicist. And uh, so I asked her, can I just add anybody? I think it's OK. And she was explaining to me and Eagle that it has to be somebody notable. So she has to be connected to an organization that's known. And then, so what should you do? Because you might just add somebody and they'll delete afterwards. Wikipedia will, will evaluate it and decide to delete it. So I guess you got to do some search on the internet and see if she's, the person is connected to, has connections, and you see if their, her organization is on Wikipedia. So that helps a lot. So you got to do a little search, do home, some homework to see if you, know, if you have good chances of keeping this entry there. Yeah, with that regard, like, you know, f from whoever is interested, maybe I could, like, circulate. So I'm involved in the, like, Wikipedia creation group in, in, in Belgium, but it's, like, generally for women in technology. And there are some guidelines, and it's like a peer review process, so it's not like a central body of Wikipedia who decides whether the person is notable enough. But there's guidelines, and if you follow the guidelines, there's more likelihood that actually the, the, the biography will remain, but it's true that it has to be someone notable enough, and so that uh, means there has to be prizes awarded to this person and there has to be an online presence. So for example, articles in magazines and newspapers and stuff like that helps. So that's, that's how you can assure that like, these names that you're selecting will have chances to, to remain. Just before this comment, I would like to, to continue on that by saying what I already said, but that um, the work that we have been doing this morning is not over, and therefore there will be a need for further cooperation between the people who wrote a page and Camellia to finish uh, things, and including uh, <coughs> making the, the page more likely to be uh, integrated to Wikipedia. Sorry. I think we both found it very interesting when Camelia pointed out that there's a page in English on Wikipedia called Wikipedia Notability, which has a long exposition of who is likely to be acceptable. I see. Thank you. Thank you. I was part of the group. And uh, before we left the place, we submitted our user ID to Camellia. I don't know whether he has delivered it to you. My question is this. What determines the list we use in that place? For example, the person I wrote about, I don't know her. I Google her name. I got information about her. And that is what I use to complete the page. So is there any criteria for selecting those people? Or are we free with the knowledge we acquire now to, to develop pages even for some people that we know? Because I remember we have selected based on the fact that you don't really know the person or you are familiar with our subjects, or 
you you be paid for the exercise. So I wouldn't know. I am not clear, and I want to be enlightened. Thank you. So I think that Camilla wanted to help with some things like pictures, for example, because at the end they were taking pictures and there is an issue of copyright and she had, if she took the picture, she could upload it and then put it on the pages that other people had started. So basically I think it was to help put those pages alive, to share your, your user information with her. I don't know if that... Yes, so if I can add on that, so I'm like you, uh, it's, it was the first time that I create content on Wikipedia, so my answer will not be complete, but I think the idea is that most of the people writing pages for Wikipedia also don't necessarily know personally the individual that they are writing for or the subject that uh, they might be uh, writing about. Um, the information is mostly taken from internet, preferably from objective documents, such as a government website of these kind of things. Now, the goal of the session of this morning, in that regard, was to familiarize you a bit with Wikipedia, not ending, end, ending with a full, uh, completed, perfect pages already. Now. I believe what you were referencing to about are you being paid or do I know the, the person I'm writing about, this is more to uh, tell the Wikipedia team if you have some conflict of interest about the page that you, are, that you will be write, writing about so that they know that they have to be particularly careful on the, the things that you will have to write. It's more a... Uh, a moral question that they ask with that than um, uh, um, category to, to put you into, if you want. Does that answer more to your question? Thank you. So do you have any comment before we close the session? No? Okay, so I would like to thank everyone for participating in the session this morning and the people who gave the report this afternoon, Marilyn, Christian and Pierre. And I think we're going to break now for half an hour for the coffee break. We are uh, finally not late compared to the initial schedule. <laughs> and we will come back in, in half an hour, so it's... Uh, yeah, it's at five. So you want to... Uh,